Wow, Mrs. Ryan. What'd you do? What do you? <laughs> what happened to the studio? It's empty. Yeah, it is. Holy cow, it really is. That's crazy pants. It's so weird. Um, how does it feel? Very, very weird. And reminds me, I need to ask you a question about the books. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go do the show from the kitchen, shall we? Cool. Seems to be the uh, the move. Let's see. Yeah, I think this will be all right. Actually, pretty cool. Yeah. Bear with us, everybody. Oh, I'm spinning. It's a little bit different than usual. <laughs> How's that? Let's see. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not bad. It's not, yeah, it's, yeah. Can I make one, hang on. Let's, let me just see if I can find the best light. Hang on. Okay. Come with. All right. Just in case we find some better light. I'm sure there's something. Where's Ray Schaefer when you need him? Oh my gosh, I know, right? Oh, hi, Kate. Hi, Kate, producer hi, Kate. Kate. We are in the living room. It's all torn apart. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty good there. Oh, no. Oh, there you go. You found some light. Yeah. What'd you do, Mrs. Ryan? Well, I figured I'd use what we have. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ryan. Welcome. Welcome. How's it going? Your great. favorite question of all time. It's going great. Yeah? I have a little sniffle. A sniffle? But I told uh, someone this weekend, I think it's all the people that are in this little outfit we got here. What do you mean? The, all the dead people that came through. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's an interesting point. I didn't even consider that. Uh, uh, you're talking so about... Um, Sp spirits type of what do you mean oh yeah like all the people the question i got most strongly from real life people were like all the asses that sat in those chairs yeah and i was like oh yeah there's chris farley <laughs> that's very funny you mentioned that i should uh well, you know what? Before we even get to any of that, hello, Mrs. Ryan. Hello. Hi. I think all our levels are good. This is a new uh, temporary production space for us. If you couldn't tell, hello, hello, everybody. We are broadcasting from the living room. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> As you can see behind us, the studio um, is in process. Uh, we are redoing the studio and uh, to accommodate some new furniture, which you may or may not have noticed was different, assuming you have noticed that we have, uh, you know, changed a couple things. We've gotten a couple just things. A <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little different. <laughs> How does it feel for you? It feels like, honestly, it feels like it should be so crowded in here, but it's like an old friend came to visit, so it's just like hanging out with a bunch of old cool shit. I know what you mean in that, like, this is usually, I did this back shot here. Hi, producer Kate. Uh, the living room, this is normally the living room, and where this desk and chairs are set up is really like the foyer kind of bar area. There's normally bar stools back here and stuff. Uh, boy, yeah, I don't know where any of these cameras are shooting. There we go. Uh, you know, bar stools and stuff. Um, and, and we cleared that stuff out just to do this show today because we are in the process of redoing the studio, as you know. Uh, we should be in there tomorrow. That is the goal. The goal is to be in there tomorrow. Uh, a lot of work has been done removing things, striking. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get too much on that, but it's going to be nice. I can't wait to get in there. I, the drawings and... I think the feel that is going to, um, whatever, I don't know what I'm saying, but it, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm stoked. I am also, if you couldn't tell, we're, we're both a little nervous. We're nervous. Is nervous fair? I'm yeah, a little nervous. I'm a little know. nervous. When it happened, I just suddenly got butterflies. It may have happened right now for me. <laughs> because we, you know, there's uh -oh. the regular, oh, we're doing the show thing. And then we're still doing the show, but the show is different today. Uh, so let's talk about that. All right. We keep saying the stuff won't be set up like it was on David Letterman. We felt that um, once the stuff arrived, there was a coolness factor. There was a, there was a something. Would that be fair? There was something in the air that we were like, uh, no, it, it ha we have to do something at least this to pay tribute. 
Yeah, like set it up the Dave way, you know, the late feels show way. Like, like I said, like an old family member, but like an older family member that needs to be honored. It's been through the wars. <laughs> oh, came home from the war. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, realize I glasses on the whole oh. thing. Holy cow! Holy cow! Does everything <laughs> sound all right? I haven't even checked the cans. I don't everything all right it sounds week? like it like it's echoey but it's yeah it's like gonna be echoey because so we're, we're not in the studio yeah right um this is a good reminder of all the work you did in there thanks so much <laughs> <laughs> thank you um we should talk about let's talk about the weekend and 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 try to ignore some of this stuff and okay. maybe it'll wash over us i'm hoping okay because i'm i'm finding that uh, i'm not very pleased with who i i'm so blah, 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 and i'm like <laughs> all day we've been running around there's been so much work happening here in order to make this all happen um that i don't feel like you know what i mean like where did this guy come from <laughs> a little amped up it's like amped you had up. too much coffee that's but it. you didn't that's it switch let us settle down let us settle okay. down is that better center zen out um, so we should, pro- we should probably acknowledge the Kramer episode, right? The Kramer, uh, apartment episode yeah. of Seinfeld. I don't know what the episode's called, but it may just be called the Merv Griffin set. That's what we always refer to it as. I have no idea what, I don't remember anything else from that episode. <laughs> well, they find, they're walking down the street, right? And Kramer sees the, the, the it pops his head in the dumpster and he's like, I, I know what this is, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. And so, he sets it up in his apartment. Yeah. Oh, you mean you don't remember any other stuff from yeah, that episode? Usually there's like three storylines that run concurrently throughout each episode. Mm-hmm. And some of them are like, if you saw the episode two years ago, you might know a little bit more about it, but you don't need to. Gotcha. But yeah, I don't remember the other two storylines. I just remember him and like having people come over. <laughs> I remember they actually have Jim Fowler come to the and he was like a you know a, a he's a he's a fan he was on the tonight show and stuff it's funny i just realized that we had him when we this is so funny how this stuff happens and how stuff comes up i just remembered all right y'all everybody knows about the um here, go over here there we go everybody knows about Ooh. the internship i had um at channel 12 when i was in junior year of high school that's right oh, senior geez. year was 30 rock no junior year was at news 12 and but uh, it was a, just a little local norwalk um uh, local news station they had a couple broadcasts daily there was a talk show in the morning called the exchange with like you know the guy it was a uh, Regis and Kelly type thing, but in Connecticut, there were cooking segments. Public and access. No, Conne- no, 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 no. This is News Twelve. This is cable vision. Oh, this is. Forgive me. <laughs> no, please. I, I, it's they had a public access studio next door. <laughs> That's where I would do my show. <laughs> but these were actually like you know, it's local, local, local. But right. regardless, the point I'm trying to get to here is that we did a remote. We did one of these, a remote segment, a remote show from out in the field, and we did it from the Maritime Center. The Maritime Center is where I ultimately had my prom two years later. Um, but it was in Norwalk, Connecticut. But what I'm getting at is one of the guests was Jim Fowler from The Tonight Show, the animal guy. <laughs> I've actually met that guy, and he was on one of the first shows I ever worked on. Oh, one of the first talk shows I ever worked on, on the local, local, just this much above public access. Yeah, but where you lived, it was like a, a small network. Like, it, it, it was a small network. I don't know what I'm saying now. It's, no, it's good. It's bigger than pub. It's it would be public access. I feel like I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's so much better than I always think it is. I guess is like the bottom line. I don't have any pictures, but I bet we should try to look it up online. Yeah. I'm sure the building's still there. I'm sure the studio and the company's still there. I mean, Cable Vision, while they've changed their names a handful of times, I'm pretty sure they're still a huge company. I mean, they were huge. As far as I know, they're still around. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it changed. It was Rainbow. Rainbow. Um, that's the, the parent company, Rainbow Connection. No, Rainbow Corporation or something like that. Um, and they owned Cablevision. In it. But it was a big deal on Connecticut and, and Long Island. It was like, you know, if you, and the truth is, if you want your, if you are getting the news to, to, to uh, start your day, truly, wouldn't you want the most local news? Come yeah. to think of it? Yeah. Like yes. for, for if you're just commuting down the street to, from Darien, Connecticut to South Norwalk to the Maritime Center, you uh, want the news that circles that area. Yeah. You want to know what's up. You don't necessarily care what's going on in metropolitan Connecticut otherwise or the world or the country. <laughs> so like everything else I was going through at the time, clearly it is a bit of a bubble. <laughs> but it's really, really saturated within that bubble. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So everybody in the area knows what it is on Long Island and Connecticut mm-hmm. and you know, southern New York. Yeah. I, I, we used to watch Canadian channels that I feel like are... The CBC? Yeah, we used to, when we would, you, bunny ears and all rabbit that. Rabbit ears. Yeah, rabbit ears. Bunny ears. Yeah. <laughs> rabbit ears, yeah. <laughs> when we had that for our TV, we would get Canadian channels. Yeah. So probably, That's crazy. Probably when you were where? Oh, in Rochester, because you're so close. Victor, the first time when we were. Because you're so close to the border. Yeah. That makes sense. So close, and I, think, I believe we still had well water. Like, we were in that area of town that was not the most technologically inclined. Okay. So we had bunny ears that were closer to receive Canadian chant, which is probably why I know my, my parents are comedy people, but, like, all, a lot of the SNL comedy people came from Canada. Yeah, and there was SCTV, which was mm. a big deal. Um the reason I asked about the CBC was just as a Canadian broadcasting company, I am assuming, corporation mm-hmm. maybe. Um, I don't know really anything about them, but the microphone that I, the, the, <laughs> the one that was like this from, that I made for high school that ended up someplace awesome, um, uh, that was actually from the CBC and it was actually etched in the back, like CBC and then a bunch of numbers. That's funny. Isn't I that did, neat? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's really cool. Because it, it was a big deal to find that in the whole bit when I was, you know, 13 years old, calling every studio at the back of the yellow pages going, do you have a David Letterman, Larry King microphone? <laughs> I didn't even know what it was called. You know what I mean? Type 77. I didn't even know that. It's so funny. Now you know everything. Oh my gosh. A little too much, I'd say. But I'll take it. Makes everything look good. It, it's, it's fun now that people know that this is what we're doing, that we're moving this and that. Because now they have real questions. Like, they yeah. want to know. It's, do you know how many people have asked, wait, is this the real David Letterman set? And I'm like, what the hell do you think we've been saying all along? They're like, we just thought. Uh. I had a come to Jesus moment with that because so many people are asking that. Okay. And it's like when we said we were going to see Chris Rock show. It's like, no, we're not just fan. Like, we like him. Uh, but I we actually that. know him. So we were that. going to see an f- old friend, so to speak. So it was suddenly was like, oh, that's what people think about this, too. It's like, no, no, this is a big, this is a huge deal. I remember that at Breakfast Club. Was that Eric Williams? He <laughs> yeah. was like, I can't remember what, but we said, oh, we're, gonna, we're going to see Chris Rock. What are you doing tonight? Oh, we're going to see Chris Rock tonight, whatever. He was in L.A. doing his show that ended up becoming the Netflix special. And, uh, and then we saw him a week later. We went to the show, had a great time, did exactly what we intended. Yeah. And then like a week later, like, uh, oh. he was like, so <laughs> when most people say they're going to see Chris Rock, they mean like, you know, because I guess the pictures we posted were backstage and like with him and stuff. So I think, I think it was one of those where we just weren't really clear because what we mean is... I, we, it, or we're not caught up in it. Would that be fair? We are not caught up in it. We were clear for what it is. That's not, we're not besties. Do you want to hold this for now? Oh, should not, I hold that? No, you should not do what you were doing. Hold it from here. Do you, do you see this? <laughs> <laughs> I did not go to Brad Cassie's. No, it's very funny. You, can you hold it how I'm holding it? Yeah. Not in the same place. Just from... <laughs> It's heavy for me. <laughs> These will not be problems in the new studio. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Okay. Now that I know how heavy it is, I'm prepared. You can hold it wherever. I just It will make a lot of noise if you hear it in your headphones if you play with the actual mic. Yes. And someone on a podcast I listened to said the same thing to just today. So Seriously? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's funny. Well, that looks awkward how you're holding it. Does it that just, can't you look good. Right you fight me on every, everything, don't you? That is married life. Sorry. You see what I'm getting at? Does that work for you? Yeah. Great. For, for right now. That's fine. I hope I don't move. You can move. Dude. I want you to get more comfortable. I don't want to do any of this stuff on the air. I want you to relax. I'm relaxed. All right. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, Breakfast Club for a moment just because we brought it up. Actually, let's talk about the weekend. Is that all right? Yes, please. I don't have a video yet, folks. We've been awfully busy, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, but what we do have is a recap from Mrs. Ryan and myself. And I think what we should talk about first is indeed Breakfast Club, uh, which was awesome. In fact, it was one of the best ones ever. Big turnout, there's 10, 10 or so cars, I'm good, you know, fair turnout. Um, everyone had a good time, everyone was social. It was like good conversation, good vibes. We talked about this stuff because we had like, we go to Breakfast Club usually like nine to noon or so. 
and then our window for this arrival was noon you to three, three something like <laughs> that so like we were talking about it the vibes were awesome there was so much positivity in the air that we were just like everybody was just, it was just awesome so we get home uh we wait a little bit whatever stuff arrives and right as the stuff we're like unpacking it i get a text from Newcomb's Ranch. Now we were just there for Breakfast Club. And the text was, holy shit, is 74 Duck all right? And I was like, what are you talking what about? You because he didn't come to Breakfast Club. He said he wasn't going to because he had to work today. So he shouldn't, I don't know what, I don't know why Newcomb's would be asking anything about. Then I opened up the picture. Oh, oh David. Oh, David, oh, David, David. 74 duck. Um, so I thought this is a mistake and I was whatever and I zoomed in and I said, holy shit, those are his stickers on the window. For those of you who are keeping score, I post this photo a lot. This car is one of my favorite cars. Uh, there's nothing that special about it from a collectability standpoint, but it happens to belong to a super cool guy and family. And it's just got a ton of personality and it's a really awesome thing. And... Um, and it ended up like that. <laughs> I'm sorry about the car. Uh, the good news now is that this post is indeed from David 74 Ducktail that he posted moments after um, I actually got that the holy text crap from, text okay. from Newcombs. So luckily our panic was very short lived um, and David was fine. David posted this himself. David is fine. He's been enjoying the weekend with his family. What a testament to 74 Ducktail, though. Uh, that car doesn't have a roll bar in it. And he flipped it a I number of times. I think that. about three times. It doesn't have does a roll, not have a roll oh. bar in it. So what you're looking at is um, a lucky a, a lucky driver for one, for sure. Uh, but what I take away from this is that it's a race car on what is essentially a race course, in what is essentially a racing accident. You know, I mean, he. I don't know exactly what happened because I haven't talked to him yet. Um, to, you know, I mean, he's okay. I've talked to him to that level, but I haven't gotten like the full yeah. download. And uh, what it looked like is that, you know, the ass went, the pendulum went, it bit into something. That rear rim is just straight up crunked. <laughs> I mean, the front one is broken too, which most people can't tell, but the, the back one is clear off. Is the tire even on? No, I don't no? think so. I mean, it's it might gone. be somewhere else. That probably would have flown. Right. If it broke, it would have flown off from centrifugal forks. Right. You know, as it's centrifugal forks, centrifugal forks. <laughs> Uh, as it was spinning around, but um, yeah, uh, but the gist of it is it, it went, it took a roll, it started flipping, and it just uh, rolled until it stopped, so that's more of a racing accident, thank God it wasn't a collision type, um, you know, accident, you know, head on or something like that, because I feel like that's where the, the tin can uh, element comes in. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but thank God David's all right, um, we were all sad and a little bit of like mourning for the car and now it sounds like he may actually be fixing it there were a lot of people on the east coast chiming in really? going doa r.i.p what are you talking about that's back great. here on the east that'd be a fixer uh so it may have planted a seed i think he was thinking about it already and um you know if it was a uh, like a, a collector car that was worth if it was more valuable or something i think it would be a no-brainer i don't know that the value will make sense it'll probably be about even but the story now that you have a car that yeah. you've crashed that theoretically saved your life. I mean, the, the action of that all. Plus now it's been wrecked. He can do anything he wants to it without pissing anyone off. Yeah. You know what I mean? You he can, can do it a anything. full RSR. He could do anything he wants. You know, you can make it into a time machine. Gullwing doors, buddy. <laughs> no, what, no, whatever, whatever he does. You know what I mean? You could do, you could do anything. Yeah. And um, so I hope that he ends up fixing it. I hope that that's. I choice. hope so too. If I can put that out there, I feel like we're the, like you were saying, like it might not mean anything on paper, but we're all the whole thing of Porsche life, like beyond beyond the car, mm -hmm. like it's about the right. resonance of the friendships that got created because of that car, and like the history of him and his family with that car, yep. and now the story and whatever. I hope there's a way to to salvage it somehow, so it's not just stories. That's awesome. I agree. Um, the, the element of like, oh, I've crashed this car. Like, I, th we've been through hell together. And how, how about if he fixes that car? And, I mean, if you believe in like spirits and all that stuff, I, I'm not saying I go that far, but these cars have a personality. That much is a fact. I think most Porsche people would agree. Um, if you've got a Porsche that, you, that you, you guys have done that together with, and then you fix it up, holy crap, I would imagine that Porsche is going to have your back. 
You know what I yeah. mean? In a in a in a yeah. universal karmic, uh, a little bit hippy dippy kind show of. Show some love. It'll show you love. Yeah, I you know how it is when you wash sad. your car, when you change the, whenever you do something, you know the the little butt dino says like, "Oh, my car is happier." It says, "Thank you." It does, right? Why not? I talk to it. I mean, I yeah, I believe that stuff. So <laughs> you're looking at me like, oh, yeah. Well, I'm like, yeah, no, I totally believe all that nonsensical spirit shit. And I like it and I totally abide by it. So. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So so that was it. So then the, the rest of the Letterman, everything, you know, that cloud went away and the Letterman set stuff uh, became wholly awesome and wow and real. Um, then we kind of set it up and then we put the microphone on the desk and the mugs and stuff. And we're just like, holy moly. It came to life. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like while we did, I know we did something else that night. I can't remember what the heck it was. I mean, I know we watched maybe movies or something, but it wasn't, it wasn't that dramatic. I don't know. Nothing to write home about. But, um, Saturday, what did we do? We went to Malibu kitchen and, uh, saw Susie who was having car trouble. Of course. <laughs> we posted a picture of just us and they weren't open yet and it's just us and like what's her name that, that mayor of Malibu lady <laughs> the lady who I can't remember her name but she Talk owns half of Malibu um, she was having, when are they open I'm like they're supposed to be open what the heck Susie was having Land Rover trouble uh, car trouble but anyway man yeah that was it a sip of coffee holy crap happened again back to the water folks yeah we are yeah you've been running around yeah it amps up in the system I found is that right? Well, yeah. Yeah, You. It, it's like uh, if you heat up water, like anything you put in there is going to get hotter by virtue of being in the hot water. How about that? Yeah, so. That up. does make sense to me. Uh, all right, so so awesome time at Malibu Kitchen. Something else I can't remember. <laughs> the whole weekend was a blur because obviously this has been a lot of work. Um, Saturday, I think that was all. I was down for the count, so. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. You were having a, yeah. You were a trooper all weekend, I have to say, though, because I posted, holy crap, three days in a row. Like, we really went out and did stuff, uh, but you did come home and crash a couple of days. My leg has been, like, seemingly disconnected, so it's like it thumps around. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I just, I want to be, like, of so much more help and moving shit around and no, doing all this stuff. And it was like... I want to say four o'clock when I was like, I'm going to, I need to lay down like for a long time. And yeah. I was like, I'll rally around six 30. And then like, that was no, for the night. Yeah. I was out. Um, but I love getting up and seeing people with the car stuff. So like holding my energy oh, so that we can do stuff yeah. is like, I love you so much for being an awesome partner in that. Like I can be like, I need to go lay down for a while. And, and thanks to fun. James Gambit, by the way, too, because it was James and uh, Tammy who invited us out thanks, that night. Guys. That's what it was. We didn't do that that night. We were going to go to dinner with them maybe. Thanks, uh, so James Gambit uh, and Tammy, so nice to see you yesterday morning though. Yeah. So nothing Saturday night, Sunday, we went to the Sherwood run, right? Yes. Or not the Sherwood run, but the Meet. Sherwood meet. Yeah. Uh, saw all our, our regular people, Barry and Eric, and, and I guess Joe has become one of our regular people. Joe Maxwell, DP, DP extraordinaire. This chair is much more comfortable, Joe, since I know you'll watch and ask me about it. I wanted to let you know it's great. <laughs> <laughs> he always asks why I'm not in a comfortable chair. He's like, and I'm like, my posture is horrible. So and well, those more comfortable. we're talking about the Eames chairs from yeah. that were in the studio. Um, they were, they are very comfortable. I, I find there's, they just don't look it because they're plywood, <laughs> but I find that they're incredibly comfortable. They are. I just, like I said to him, like I have horrible posture and I'm so little, I squirm around in them. And so it looks uncomfortable. And I know that gotcha. but these are more confining, like a seat in a car. Gotcha. <laughs> so I'm together. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Joe Maxwell was like, I was going to say something about that. He's doing his car, John Esposito. I can't remember. No, I guess not. But he I should come over. We want to get Joe Maxwell on the show. Joe, Please. you should come over and hang out with us and talk some stories. We're hanging out at Breakfast Club with him the other day, and we're like, I don't remember even what the heck we were talking about, but he ended up getting on to, oh, yeah, he worked on, I don't remember which Friday the 13th and something else. And then he's like, oh, yeah, no, I worked on a bunch of stuff back then before I was a DP. I worked on uh, Blue Velvet. And he went, I was like, wait, what's going yeah. on? Get your ass There's in this chair whole, over here. Whole other Stop. Story. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, what's going on? Just, we need you here, man. Uh, so come over here. Come over here and tell your stuff. Don't just hang out. Don't be shy. Don't spend all your time at John Esposito's shop. Come over here, too. <laughs> Um, all right. I would like to, uh, 
we've acknowledged that this is the Letterman set. Everybody knows that. Let me see if I can get our kitty out here because I think we have a wide cam. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, me. Yeah, you. I'm just taking it all in. Oh, good. Come on out. I pulled up the list of people that have sat where I'm sitting right before we started. Yeah. And the only, well, they all, there's a whole bunch that stick in my head. Marty Short is one of them. So when we were talking about this Canadian broadcasting, whatever, and SCTV, I was like, oh, yeah. But B.B. Newworth is the first one that jumped out at me. Oh, no way. And I laughed in my head so many times. Hi, meow, meow. Here we go. It's a stupid pet trick. We chum the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's a stupid pet trick when you put treats on the floor and your cat eats them. Although she's not. So maybe, that's the, up, maybe that's the pet trick. <laughs> meow, meow. Those are for you. I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Just put these up here. <laughs> I've learned my place. Uh, so, Baby North. Baby North, because um, when we... Oh, is it BB? I don't know, actually. I just know where the Lilith from Cheers. <laughs> when we met, you used to jokingly... Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> what happened is you were working with Rob Corddry... And Rob Corger was thinking about putting you, or whatever. He was asking who would ever uh, play you if you were, if, some, if a character was ever based on you, who would play you? And I can't remember what you said, but you had something or other. And you came home and told me about this. And I was like, no brainer. <laughs> and you're like, who? And I was like, Lilith, Bla Baby New Earth, or BB, Baby, 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 Baby's Kids. <laughs> I think it is BB. I'm confusing it with Baby's Kids. <laughs> anyway, uh, she went back and, and told Rob, who had quite the laugh about it, as I recall. <laughs> Would that be fair? I think that's fair. I think the minute you, uh, well, I also typically wear my hair up, and so did Lilith. And she oh, yeah, and you were really effing up tight back then. Yes. Yes, I was very uptight. Yeah, Rob said to me one time, and when I told him I was writing, he's like, oh, I would hate to be your publicist. <laughs> Hate like, to be your publicist. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I was like, okie doke. Does that tell you anything? That's interesting. Well, well, he doesn't want to be a publicist for one. For nor one, should he. and my th what told me the most was that my retort was, "I do it for you," um, but because <laughs> we're best friends, and that's how it works. <laughs> well, because anyone needing a publicist needs a, a pit bull, and it's like I get it. Like, yes, but I yes, I don't like being that either. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> But yes, uh, I've got. I go to Al Gore. I think of Al Gore, who sat in that chair. Uh, I go to. I'm just thinking from the first couple of nights. It was started with Bill Murray, then then um, Robin Williams. On. Yeah, this was the this front. Is the of, one he wrote on the yeah. front of this desk. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's all they. It's not there anymore since that show. I mean, who? I don't know how they did that. Uh, whether it was whether they repainted the desk or whether it was a uh, um, removable paint. TV magic. But for sure, they they. Bill Murray spray painted the front of this desk, but I go to Robin Williams was in the oh, uh, yeah. in the second uh, episode. I mean, I don't even. What did the list show? What other names jumped out at you? Uh, like I said, Marty Short was one. Um, Robin and and uh, Bill, obviously. Um, Isabella Isabella Rossellini. How funny is that? We just mentioned Blue Velvet. Yeah. Yeah, so then I went through that. I know we, she Hollywood came royalty. up the other day, and I was like... I, I was wrong the other day, but I have the correct answer now. Okay. Uh, she was Ingrid Bergman's Thank daughter. Thank you. I said Audrey Hepburn, which we all knew wasn't right, but it was somebody that was like totally Hollywood royalty, and I, we couldn't remember. Ingrid Bergman. I couldn't figure it out, and so I got stuck after I saw her name. I was like, the Friends episode with oh. the phone booth or whatever. Uh, Is it the... No, he's the vestibule. He's in a different that's, one. I'm in an ATM <laughs> vestibule. <laughs> Ah. I'm in an ATM vestibule with Jill Goodacre. <laughs> it was Jill Goodacre, Mrs. Connick Jr. Oh, okay. I forgot who that was. Uh, the Isabella Rossellini one is the um, Rachel and Ross have a bet, and it, she was on Ross's list, but he took her off because she's that's international. Right. So she played herself. That's <laughs> right. That's so why I got stuck in that whole thing. But she I just could... walks into the coffee shop at the end, I think. <laughs> and Rachel's like, go for it, honey. See, see how that works out. And he walks up and he's like, you're, you're, on, you're on my list. And she's like, I'm not here. I, 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 we've seen it, honey. What's go oh. Do you want to do the whole? No. <laughs> We're talking about people really in that like chair. It. Oh, I told you I got stuck there. Um, 
Yeah, I don't remember. I know there's so many, so I, I'll just... But you brought it up. Did you have... Okay, I don't want to. No, I got, like I said, I got stuck in Isabella Rossellini. And I, that's where I went. All right. Well, a lot of people and uh, the furniture isn't going anywhere. So we'll have a lot of opportunities to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I do think that we should. Um, oh, people have been asking about the progress in the studio. Um, I don't have a whole lot there for you. Oh, gosh. I know what else we did on Saturday because I forgot we have a picture of it. Where's this? Oh, Holy cow. Yeah, we because went on a little mini trivia sightseeing tour to Johnny Carson's house. That's right. Johnny Carson's old house. How cool is that? Throwing that around. Uh, and coming here as far as the progress in the studio. Boy, I guess I didn't put those, those images in there. That's all right. I'll, I'll put them up after. Uh, imagine you're looking at it right now. <laughs> okay, isn't that something? Look that is that. a picture of the studio all empty, which you can see behind me. All right, how about this one right now? Wow. <laughs> that's Great. going to be a picture of the table in the other room with all of the prop and set deck on oh, it. Oh, I I've love that photo. Well. I'm so glad you took it. And let's see. How about this when this when the desk was being brought in? Mm -hmm. Seriously. And we were checking it all out and so doing a little cool. bit of damage control. Uh, here's some of the things we found, too. Look at that. Oh, I'm so glad. I wasn't sure if we could talk about that. Well, I the don't see why not. The cigar wrapper, yeah? yeah? This, is, this is underneath the bottom of the desk. It was. Li it's literally a... Uh, I left it there, too. I didn't even take it, but awesome. it was kind of stuck to the bottom there. It's a Cohiba <laughs> cigar collar. And that, by the way, would be right underneath the left side here of the... Uh, like, as far as where that's actually mm, located, it's like right here, which I'm probably... I'm guessing ashtray. Oh, it fell on the floor okay. just from the old days. Yeah. But I can't believe it's still stuck to the bottom of the desk. Uh, and then this one we found kind of funny. And it's hard to read there because of my the, my photography work, which is awful. But it says Dave suck the Oscars. <laughs> which That's is right underneath the us, the uh, the desk here, the desk that we are sitting at right now. This. Um, so I was basically doing this and drawing this and watching, you know, this and. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> hey -o. I don't know what to tell you other than uh, manifestation works, folks. It absolutely does. Um, none of this is anything I thought would happen, um, nor were we actively seeking for it to happen. And we just kept working with what we were doing in there. And this m magically um, presented itself. So as you all know, we are doing a documentary, as you know from us saying it all the time, nobody really knows the information because we're, we, we haven't been able to talk about it much. Um, but we are working on a documentary that um, is involving all of this stuff. It involves me when I was a kid and when I did the high school television show that was just like Dave's and um, when I replicated the microphone to be just like his and um, when I ended up giving that microphone to uh, somebody pretty spectacular uh, and where it ended up and stuff, I'm sure you can probably figure out. But the story is spectacular and I can't wait to tell it. Um, so all of this will help us do that, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, the fact that this was sort of a tester, like, oh, could we, could we actually set this up in the living room and have room for it? Um, or would we need to get a stage and a space and all that stuff? Um, this sort of proves that we can do what we will need to do. And once again, this is not how we will be using this stuff. Um, we did this show today as a tribute to Dave, The Late Show, all of the awesomeness that um, has helped create what we are now creating. And um, thanks, I guess Dave. thanks, Dave. Yeah, hashtag thanks, Dave beyond i don't know if it's possible to even say how much i owe you but uh mrs ryan and i both yeah. owe you quite a deal and thanks dave and all the people that put um that show together because when i say thanks dave i'm talking about the late night show and everything so and i mean so all many. Of the daniel kellisons of the world i mean the writers meryl marco and i mean the directors hal gurney and all of the above um jerry i guess we should jerry foley of course as well um, there are too many names, obviously. It's an award-winning so, so production, so there's tons oh, yeah. of people. We Kath should talk about that. The late, great Kathleen Ankers, of which yeah. none of this would be possible, because I used to call and interview this wonderful, nice, kind woman. Um, I literally would call. I have all of my notebooks still of when I would call when I was 13 or 14 years old, and I would like just ask questions about the microphone, about the desk, about, about this stuff that we now have sitting here. Um, thank you, Kathleen Ankers. Uh, and also, she won an Emmy 
for this, this stuff. <laughs> it was nominated in 94 so cool. and they won in 95, I believe, uh, for this. So it's awfully cool. Great job. We are, we are, <laughs> yeah, we are humbled. Uh, and Very. we wanted to do this mainly as, as a tribute because it's going to be a little different in there. But I don't have anything else to say. I feel that I'm blathering on and, I, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not wanting to do that. <laughs> so one more. This was their old set. It's our new set. Thanks to the Dons on that one. Uh, Don Geller. That was a screen grab from his YouTube. But we've also, Thanks, somebody I used to know a long time ago, and we've since gotten back in touch. And hopefully he will be able to help us along the way as well. Because if Very there's cool. anybody who knows anything about Letterman, it's that guy. And if you don't know something about Letterman that you want to know, or about the show, that's the guy you go to. So, um, so shout out to Don Geller as well. Yeah. Do you have anything else, Mrs. Ryan? Because I'm like in a very weird, nervous. I'm feeling that from you, so I'm gonna say no. Well, it's, a, it's it's a weird. I feel like oh, I'm closing up on what we're doing here, and and it'll be different back to normal again. And I'm looking forward to that. But I am a little bit. Yeah, there's a little. There's something going on here. I mean, can I be bold and ask if this is like your childhood dream realized in a way? Like, I know your talk show kind of already was like the one you already had, but having this real stuff. Well, I don't. Yeah, I mean, the answer would have to be yes, right? Not because you're a fan, but because this is like your like it just fits you like a glove would. Uh, thank you for saying that. Um, that's very funny you say that because. David Letterman once <laughs> oh no <laughs> while giving me the late show jacket I have uh he sized me up by saying well we, we I, this, I, we, I what the hell did he say but something to the effect he sized me up and said well we're about the same size so this ought to fit this ought to work for you oh. and um <laughs> it does so thanks Dave <laughs> oh, you don't. right um, yeah I guess the answer to that would be yes except that I never only the childhood version of me ever wanted to be David Letterman, right. you know what I mean? And I wanted to have everything exactly the same in the whole bit. Um, so I would say, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of that coming up and the little high school kid who doesn't know what to do, like all that, that's possible. Good, good on you. Thanks. I just go to my own, I, I don't want to jump in too hard, but like, I have not been the biggest, I, I'm a huge, obviously I'll support anything you want, but I'm not inherently the most supportive human. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> sure, yeah, whatever. I'm supportive in my nonchalance about it, about everything. And so when this showed up here, it it took on a life that I was not prepared to care about. So like this is, it's so neat to watch you interact and watch it, have it here and do become part of our story. It's weird. It's weird because I kind of got used to the table set up, but obviously what I was doing in there was replicating this. <laughs> yeah. So it's a weird, you know what I mean? Cause that's what I always replicated before. So that's what I was comfortable with. Yeah. This is definitely, uh, it's different. It's definitely different for sure. Looks good on you. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can't wait to also, yeah. It'll be a little more us tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much, gosh, everybody, for watching. Look at that blank space back there. My God, there's nothing Holy in cow. it. It's incredible. Uh, it's so awesome. Thank you for um, being here, for going along this journey with us, really. Because I think that's kind of... yeah. This is a journey. If you couldn't tell, like I'm tongue tied and this whole thing, it's a journey. This is not professional at all. Sorry. <laughs> it's so much fun. Okay. Though. Well, it's our own little late night playset. Yeah. You know, which is, which is a kind of the project point. that we've got going as well. It's another project. So, um, yeah, this was a good way to showcase all that. I love so. it. All right. I love you, Mrs. Ryan. We love all of you out there. I don't know what camera I'm on. This is so, so <laughs> crazy. We love all of you. Thank you for going along with this. Um, on this whole thing there. It's just crazy pants. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be in there. It'll be back to normal. Um, thanks, Dave. Thank you.